Hi, how are you? I hope you're doing all right. My name is Danielle and I'm gonna redeem myself. <laughs> In March of 2021, I filmed a video where I unboxed the Hane Rogoromo figure of Mako and then I did some figure photography for her and the results were underwhelming. But to put it into perspective, at that time, my knowledge of cameras was turn it on and click the button. So, you know. <laughs> And now I'm not an expert by any means. In fact, I'm actually a very slow learner. It's just something I've learned to accept about myself. But I did in that time take a introduction to photography course and I know what ISO is now. So that's a start. <laughs> so of course, what we're doing today is we're gonna be attempting to do some more figure photography slash I'm also gonna get some B-roll this time. You know, it's gonna be for a couple of figures that you haven't seen on my channel yet. <laughs> But before we get into anything, this video is in fact sponsored by Bai. All right, this video is all about all the things that have changed since the last video, but one thing that hasn't changed is my love and consistent use of Bai, a proxy service that lets you buy off of Japanese online marketplaces like Amazon Japan, Yahoo Japan Auctions, and Mercari. What they do is they buy or bid on the items on your behalf, those items get sent to their warehouse, and from there they're sent to your place including the fairy tale postcard that I showed in the first video. So this was something that I had bought using them and it's a little bit more on topic in this video. So that's actually quite interesting. <laughs> Should I predict that? I don't know. But other things that I got within this time is also this Haikyuu postcard of all of them in the game. I also got this really nice Noragami clear file. And even, I'm not even kidding you, my Kurobuki Akaneki figure with the bonus faceplate, which was such a great find. I got them for 22,000 yen off of Yahoo Japan Auctions with the help of Bai, and I am still so happy about it to this day. So if you yourself are interested in using Bai as well, then first time users can sign up using the link in my description for a 2,000 yen off coupon, which is a nice little discount off your first purchase. So thank you so much to Bai for sponsoring this video and let's get to it. All right, so the figures in question are the Kurobukiya, Shiki, and Rebecca figures. Um, I actually got these a while back when I finished up my foundation arts program. You know, this was a congratulatory gift to myself. It was actually a really big deal that I finished up that program. Uh, and so these figures are quite special to me. Uh, but basically, these are Shiki and Rebecca from the series Eden Zero. This is Hiro Mashima, is the author of Fairy Tale. This is his latest series coming out, and it is sci fi space related. So that's what we're going to be going with for the theme today as well. So, the way that we're going to be doing this today. Hello. <laughs> is with these two bad boys that I've had in my closet for so many years. I don't even know how many years at this point. I saved them for so long with the idea of like, one day I'll use them. One day when I have a great idea, I'll do it. And you know, but I gotta save them for that. I can't use them ahead of time. I can't do something stupid on them. I can't do something silly and that I enjoy. It has to be for serious art. So to spite my younger self, we're gonna do something stupid and silly and that I'm going, I'm expecting this to fail because not only, hello again, not only are we going to be just attempting to draw, paint on, do some sort of galaxy star theme thing, which I've never done before. So this is my first attempt. Those are always the best. Um, not only are we gonna be attempting to do that, but I'm gonna take it a step further and I'm gonna try to poke holes into it so that I can put like lighting behind slash underneath it and then like maybe cool lights could come through and make some kind of cool effect and... Hi there. So basically what we're going, oh, don't look at my recording device. That's behind the scenes footage. Gotta sign up my, gotta sign up to my Patreon for that. Uh, <laughs> So this is, should I just, this is the best we're gonna get. <laughs> Basically, we've got, I've got my, my trusty ink, red ink stained right on my crotch, what used to be my favorite pair of Roots sweatpants on, and my also stained 
for some reason. I don't know, there's, it's, there's black on it from something. <laughs> Paint maybe? <laughs> so basically we're set and we, we're gonna get started on, on doing this. Oh gosh, how do I do this? Okay. So getting started on the painting here, I approached it very haphazardly. I applied the paint very messily and with little care about how it actually turned out. Now, the thing is, with my figure photography and B-roll, of course, I do actually really like to have the figure very in focus with the background pretty out of focus. I do like that stark contrast. And add into the fact that with the lighting and editing that was gonna happen afterwards, it just meant that I had a lot of room for error. So my main goal for this was literally just to get it space, space-esque. You know, I wanted it to have the essence of space. It didn't actually need to look exactly like a beautiful space scene or like my reference or whatever, just implied space. <laughs> the thing is though, even if I did need to get it very exact, I just didn't want to be. I really, really wanted this project to be something where I could let loose and not care about the outcome of it. Like it didn't matter if this entire thing failed to me. It was just a fun idea I had and thought, let's do it. Let's try it out. So <laughs> yeah, it, I, let, it's kind of an excuse to say like, oh, it's because of the figures out of focus. It's literally just because I wanted, I wanted to slap some paint onto a canvas and enjoy myself. And that's exactly what I did. I might've had a little too much fun though. I did get very messy. The paint kind of went everywhere, including on myself and all of the areas around me, but that was kind of part of the fun. <laughs> like I felt like a kid playing in the mud or something like that. <laughs> Guys, honestly, do this. It's so fun. It's such a great stress reliever too. Anyways, uh, in terms of my actual thought process when going into it, because yes, believe it or not, I was thinking a little bit, <laughs> but the actual thought process boiled down to use as many paints as possible and as much as possible, because as well as trying to get rid of my old canvases, I was also trying to get rid of my old acrylic paints, which I've had for like a long, long time. And it's not that I need to get rid of them, but I did basically switch over to digital art mainly, and I just don't really do a lot of traditional art anymore. And so I was like, you know what? I really need to like clean out all my old art supplies. Let's try to actually use them. So yeah, <laughs> the, the goal was to slap as much paint onto the canvas as possible. But I also was trying to do things like keep the brush strokes very loose and actually have a brush stroke look to them. Like I didn't want it to be very blended. Uh, and so it, it was actually purposeful that it was very brush strokey. <laughs> I also did things like when I was making the stars, I made sure that I used like a very pink paint because I thought it would be really cool to have pink stars in the background rather than uh, something white or anything along the lines of that. I thought it would be very complimentary to the figures or have a cool effect. And yeah, it was nice. 10 out of 10, highly recommend, do it yourself. <laughs> I made a bit of a mess <laughs> and maybe it wasn't smart to do it near my entire collection. Um, but luckily, while some paint did somehow get behind me, it didn't get in onto any of my shelving. So I'm going to take it as a win, or at least if it did, I haven't found it yet, but <laughs> Um, that was a lot of fun. That was so much fun. I really enjoyed it. I'm really happy I did that. But yeah, now we just gotta wait for these to dry, then I'm gonna poke some holes into them. Um, and you know, I'll see you guys tomorrow because I'm gonna wait for these to like fully dry. I'm not risking my fingers with this. So I'll see you guys tomorrow while this is drying up and then we'll ruin it some more. Let's go. Okay. Yes, you're right. It's me, same day, many hours later. Uh, it's dark out now. And I think it's like 10 or 11 o'clock or something like that. But basically we have a little bit of a change of plan. So it's all dried up and I kept on looking at them and I kinda, I kinda like them. I kinda don't wanna ruin them just yet. And I wanna at least try, oh, and let me show them one sec. 
And basically, it's the Spark Notes version, is this. And does it not just look fine on its own? <laughs> So yeah, what I was thinking is just at least take footage and photos and all that kind of stuff now. And then if we do need to switch it and go for the light plan, then we can do that. But if it works, it works, you know? So I ended up <laughs> literally putting them down to pick them back up again, but I ended up choosing this one as the bottom. I just kind of like it less. I feel like the stars don't look as nice. But this one, I feel like I really like how it turned out with the stars and everything. And I was also kind of thinking like, I could just reuse these as well. <laughs> I was finally gonna get rid of these. But if I keep them for a while, they can be a really quick figure background. And if I ever wanna make another figure background, I don't have to go out and get canvases. I can just paint over this too. So I don't think I'm actually gonna get rid of them, I think. After all of that, this, this whole thing was basically for me to like get my art supplies so I don't need any more. But now I'm gonna have to buy more paint if I paint over- oh my god, okay. Right? Like that looks fine. Um, and then let me just like get one light up at least. Okay, so that is one light up. Very bright. Look how cool. Very nice. All right, so the next thing that we need to set up is this sunset light thing. I got it for like 20 bucks. You can tell because it, well, you can tell I stepped on it <laughs> and it came off of the stand, so it doesn't stand up anymore. Um, and I need to like hot glue that or something, but I'm too lazy, so we just need to set this up somehow. <laughs> Right, and then you can shine. Hello, hello, jumping over to some voiceover again to kind of explain what's going on here. So of course I'm setting everything out, putting all my lights out, uh, putting the sunset light on and like choosing that color and type stuff. Uh, the quality is about to dip because right there, nice. <laughs> the quality dipped because I did actually have to switch to recording with my iPhone since the camera that I used to take my B-roll and pictures and stuff like that is the same camera that I used to record all the time because I only really have one usable camera right now so yeah <laughs> but as you can see I'm just kind of putting my umbrella light up to diffuse some of the light I decided not to make it as harsh which is something I later regretted but it is what it is we'll get to that part when we get to that part but as you can actually see in the front there there is a shorter light with a kind of blue bulb to it so that's the black light bulb that I have and my idea was that like Literally Shiki has some black light elements to him so they glow if it's under that type of light. And I was I was just like, this is so smart. I'm gonna be able to have the glowing elements. You know, it'll add a cool hue, yada, yada, yada. Well, that basically became useless because not only was it so dim that it barely even like made a difference when it came to recording, but it also went out like halfway through, so. It, it, it was like, I guess a really old, it was a hand-me-down from like my dad. He was like, I got this, do you want it? I was like, sure, thanks. And so it it went out. So it was, it was useless in the end. <laughs> That's why you stopped seeing it. And then you can actually see how I'm holding up my sunset light without its stand. And I used like my art supplies bag. It was literally the only thing sturdy enough and that I could put on my bed to actually get it to stay but it didn't stay. It fell so many times and it was so annoying to keep it steady and to get the positioning and all this kind of stuff. And so this this did actually prompt me to hot glue it together the next day because I had enough. I was like, I'm not dealing with this anymore. <laughs> And yeah, the rest of it is just that I was using an old tripod that has a broken leg, so I can only really use it for this kind of stuff, but I still use it because it's got very smooth motion and that's good, obviously, for things like B-roll where you want it to be as smooth as possible. So it is still usable, so I'm gonna use it, of course. And really, this is just your average B-roll taking session where you get as many angles as you can, lighting combinations, and just really as much footage as you can so that you don't have to go in again and, you know, do another round and, set everything up again and because you really don't want to do that you know all right day two part three 
I did earlier today go and do another round of photos and videos. I just knew I wasn't happy with what I had gotten last night, that the lighting was gonna be too dark and that kind of thing. So I wanted to experiment with some other combinations. And by the end, I did find a combination I really liked. It was by the end though, so I was pretty tired. I didn't really wanna to do too much more B-roll. So I was pretty minimal in the B-roll, which is sad. The combination I like the best is the one that I have the least amount of B-roll for, but I do have a lot of photos for it because I honestly, I don't really like B-roll. To me, it's more of a chore than anything. And like, if I do it this way, you know, where I have fun with the backgrounds and stuff like that, it makes it more enjoyable. You know, it's a creative outlet, but definitely if I didn't have a channel, I would never do B-roll again. But on the other end, on the other end, I love taking photos. Like I would, I don't need a channel to want to take photos and create backgrounds and stuff like that. So in my perfect world, I would only be taking the photos anyways. And those are the only things that matter. So I'm going to go about uh, editing now. And you know, I was, it, it was kind of funny. I was looking at my old uh, video to kind of compare where I was then and where I'm at now. And I literally talked about how with the editing at that time, I was using like an app uh, because I didn't have Photoshop. I didn't know how to use it and whatever. I was comfortable with the app, yada, yada, yada. But now I do have Photoshop. I do have it. Um, I use it mainly for like illustration for digital art. So I'm actually not that good at editing photos on it. I, do, I can do some like basic stuff, like, you know, cutting things out and making things transparent and all that kind of stuff. But actual editing, I'm pretty rough with, but that's okay because to get Photoshop for whatever reason, the package was cheaper if I also got Adobe Illustrator and Adobe Illustrator Classic. So, I have that, which I actually know how to use because that's what we use in our photography course. So I just realized I said Adobe Illustrator, Lightroom, <laughs> Lightroom, <laughs> Lightroom Classic. I'm not redoing that take. <laughs> so we did get 134 photos. Yeah, we got 134 photos that we got to look through. Like everything else, the more photos you take, the better because the more likely you'll have a shot that you like. And we're aiming for one shot each that I really like. If I can have more than one, that's great, but I'm, I'm, I'm aiming for one. Um, but yeah, the, the process of this is simple, but long in that, especially now that I have all these, I have to go through them one by one and rate each one so that I can start figuring out which one I even want to edit. But here's an overview of how it's looking. Like this was last night. And that one turned out kind of well. It's not that they all turned out badly, but it's, they're very dark, you know, they don't really stand out. I do like the pink additions, but because I was just really not doing well with the lighting situation, it didn't work out well. But then today, you know, we got like, look at this. Look, she stands out so much. And this isn't even edited yet. Like, oh my God, that's, I like that one. <laughs> Oh, I love figure photography. I'm so... <laughs> like, it's just so satisfying. Oh, it's so nice to see that I got some ones that I really like. And then like at the very end, we kind of have... <gasps> okay, I need to get to rating these. Oh my God. I, okay. Anyways. Okay, so I have it all picked out now. So I have three photos that I'm gonna edit specifically for this video. Maybe if I feel like it, I'll go back and edit some more or something like that. But we have my favorite of them together, which was very difficult because like I said, I like things to be more focused to the characters in the front. So when there's multiple subjects, making that balance is so difficult, but I like this one of them together because they're in focus. And also it was the most, interesting composition of all of them. Like, I don't, I'm even iffy about it, but all the rest looks kind of boring. Whereas this one looks like 
I don't know, we're spinning around them or something. I don't know. So I like that. Um, <laughs> and then, ready for this? Ready? <laughs> I'm actually so excited. Um, then we have this one right here of Rebecca. Look how cute she's looking. I really like this because there's a big difference in lighting from one side to the other. I don't know, I just, I really like the composition of it all. There's another one I was on the fence about, but I, this is definitely my favorite of hers. So we're gonna, we're gonna concentrate and not uh, overdo it with all of this because we still have all of the B-roll footage and stuff. But then, ready? I don't know if I showed this early, anyways. Look at him. This is what I mean. It doesn't matter. Like 134, I got three good photos and I'm happy with that. That's a successful photo shoot to me. So <laughs> I'm actually so giddy. I'm so excited about this. But what we're gonna do is now it's time to develop them. Uh, so, and that's really easy on here. You just use sliders and whatever um, and to, to do your best to make it look nice so and how i go about making it look nice is i just kind of go through most of the sliders test out their effect and see if it makes me like the photo any better and at this point i actually kind of know which sliders i like and the amounts that i like them at so i tend to just kind of do that over and over again with slight adjustments depending on whatever photo i'm working on though i do actually need to go through and use and experiment with some other sliders or effects and all that kind of stuff that I don't usually experiment with so that because you know that's how you learn and grow is you do different things and then you see what sticks and maybe nothing sticks but maybe something does anyways <laughs> how I usually go about editing my photos is I like to make it enhanced natural if that makes any sense like I like the heavy lifting to be done by the things that I did while taking the photo rather than the editing itself. I don't usually like a really edited look. And honestly, when editing these photos, that's exactly what I was trying to do. I was kind of doing that enhanced natural thing, but I just found that as I was editing them, I kept on going for a more and more edited look, which is something I love about the creative process. Like you think you're gonna do this thing and then it turns out completely different. And that absolutely happened a bunch here, but yeah, so usually I go for enhanced natural, but in this case, I think I really liked the cartoony and absorbed vibe of the very edited photo, but yeah. <laughs> Okay, so I think I have something I like, and then I'm just gonna reset for a second. Oh, wow, okay. Um, I'm thinking I'm liking that. I love looking at the difference before and after. I think it's so fun. So I'm gonna call it for that one, and I'm gonna go edit the other two. I'll be right back. I edited the other two. I used the uh, Shiki figure as the kind of base and then I would adjust them if I needed to do anything particular. So of course, again, we have the Shiki, how he looked before. Then we have Rebecca. This one is a little weak, to be honest. I think that she kind of blends in a little too much to the background, but I have a bunch of other stuff to do. So we're not gonna edit it past this, but here's what she looked like before. So that's a pretty good difference. And then we have the biggest change from before and after. We have the Shiki and Rebecca one where I'm like, uh, it was kind of horrid before a little bit. When I mean I'm stopping here, I mean when it comes to like photos and stuff like that, I can literally sit here for like two hours plus. I can just keep going, editing over and over and over again, continuously exp uh, exporting it. And then, you know, seeing how does it look on the phone? How does it look on the computer? How does it look at different sizes? Yada, yada, yada. Like I can literally do this all day and I have, you know, other stuff to do now. So that's why I'm gonna stop here. Honestly, I'm not 100% happy with the editing. I'm not, but again, we need to stop earlier. I don't have that luxury this time. <laughs> But yeah, uh, I'm gonna get these exported and then let's head on over to my video editing software. <laughs> so here we have my video editing software. 
Uh, and I use DaVinci Resolve. Uh, it's what I've used for a very long time now. It's free, which is really nice, unless you want to get the paid version, which I don't have. But uh, it's a very heavy program, so I did actually need to upgrade my computer to be able to work it as well as it works now when it still gets very laggy very fast. Like I still technically need to upgrade my computer past this, so I paid much more for this than maybe any other editing program at this point, but I really like it. I'm super attached to it and this is what I stick to, but here we have all of the footage. You can see how like dark it is here. Um, that compared to what I got this morning, which is like this. Oh my God. Oh, <laughs> stop. <laughs> This is actually like I've seen I've seen the footage on here, but this is my first time looking through it. it looks so good. Now I just have to see if I, the movement was smooth enough and whatever. But yeah, so basically, technically, when I'm looking at uh, gosh, look at unedited footage is so embarrassing. Um, technically, so what I do is I talk and whatever, and then I think about what clips I need, and then I try to find whatever clip works best for however I'm talking. And then when I find it, like say I take like this, press in, you let it go up, you press out, and then you use this one so that you don't take the audio with it, and you can put it down here. I am very zoomed out right now. This is the current project. This is how it's looking. I have all of this stuff. Um, I have a lot of work to do. <laughs> but, you know, then you can come in here. And then just this part, <laughs> look, it's already laggy. And then that part's there. And then when you go to the color, right? The color is here. This is where you edit the color. And I don't do very many adjustments to the color. I find that it very easily gets oversaturated in a way that's I don't personally like uh, on this platform and so I just try to just do like something very I usually do like one the issue is that I'm so bad with making everything I do too dark it's actually something I've been struggling with for so long not even just like on editing but especially like illustration and stuff like that and so I always try to take into consideration that I need to make things lighter than I think they need to be because every time I get off the program, it's just so dark and you can barely see it and it's so frustrating. It happened last time with my, I was so mad because, sorry, I'm going off on a tangent. I was so mad because I spent hours and hours and hours on that Zhongli figure and then I export it and it's too dark and then I spend more hours trying to fix it and it doesn't fix and I'm, I've had enough. I've had enough. So you know what? Sometimes my thing is, sometimes my stuff is too dark. We're figuring it out. So, <laughs> so yeah, the whatever. And I, I, so yeah, I need to make um, things lighter than I think they need to be. I, I usually just like do around 54 saturation. Aw, look at it. It's already looking so much better. I like to change the hue a little bit. Oh, wow, look at that. Sometimes I like to change this. I don't want to change it this time around. Um, and then sometimes I do like change this. But honestly, like, I think I'm solid with that, maybe. Wow, look at that. And we're done. Video end. Bye. Not even going to add this part reduce the thing. I'm actually having so much fun. <laughs> like there's something about just like sharing this process that I already think is pretty fun and like seeing the results. It's, it's nice. I like creative outlets. I think they're fun. I really enjoy myself doing stuff like this. Can you tell? Here, let's see what other clips I can get. That one turned out pretty well. The thing is when it actually comes to putting all of this together, like to do my little montage thing, I'm probably going to have to like use different clips. Oh my God, look. Let's see, is there... Uh, that one's not bad. Just take a bunch of clips. Mm, see, I'm not even like looking at any of this stuff. It's just all very dark. And I like, I like the pink contrast, but when that's the only 
like thing on it. I feel like it washes them out if anything. Versus there's just so much vibrancy in something like this versus something like this. Look at that. Look at the difference. Oh my god. <laughs> That's where all my footage is. This is look at look at this amount of footage versus this. And this was like a second attempt. This was a different kind of lighting that I wasn't really happy with. So basically all of this is useless. All of this is mainly useless, unless I'm desperate. Uh, and, and this is it. I might be desperate. I didn't get enough <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna... I'm gonna go create the montage. You guys are gonna see it right now. And we're back. Hello. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that. I haven't made it yet. I still, I just stopped the camera and restarted it again. So we'll see, I'll see. You guys already saw. Anyways, <laughs> final thoughts is that I definitely redeemed myself, I think, uh, because I, it's definitely an improve of quality. Um, and yes, a little bit of that is due to the fact that I just have better, equipment, things like better editing software, which I definitely wouldn't have been able to do back then, even if I did have the knowledge I had now. But that's another thing, even with the better equipment, the difference is that I also know how to use it and know how I like to use it now. So it's a lot easier to do things that I actually like. And yeah, I just feel like now I can approach more projects, more ambitious projects at least, and that it's a lot of fun for me. Like you guys literally saw, it was so fun getting to see the results of all of this work. And you know, I'm definitely going to be doing this again. Uh, who knows though, maybe it'll be like last time where I said that and then it took me like over a year. So I don't know when, but there will be a part three to this at some point. Maybe I'll be using the canvases again. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna get back to editing so that I can actually get this video out and you can see up into that point. <laughs> okay, bye. I'd like to give a big thank you to my patrons over at Patreon and an extra special thank you to Gregory Frazier. Thank you guys so much. With all that said, thank you guys so much for watching this video and I do hope that you have an amazing, amazing day. Bye-bye.